Yo, what's going on guys? This is Miasin and welcome to my Infernoid combo video. So Infernoids are actually by far one of my favorite decks in in history. It is in my top three, if not the second favorite deck after Cyber Dragon. So I'm really excited to actually make this combo video. I'm going to be featuring it alongside a lot of other engines and I will be doing more than just one deck profile. I will be doing actually three deck profiles. So I don't want to spoil it right now, but I mean, I kind of have to. So I'll be doing an Ancient Warriors Infernoid deck profile. Uh, a Needle Fiber Tuner Combo uh, Inferno deck profile, and then an Inferno Lair deck profile. And I will be doing a test hand video for probably all three of them, if you guys actually enjoy these videos. So yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it motivates me a lot. And uh, yeah, let's go, let's go to combo number one and enjoy. Alright, so for combo number one, this is relatively simple. I mean, it's basically just Resolve Void Feast and you win. So there's just no depth. That's why I'm trying to start with uh, the obvious combos and then I'm going to go into the super mind-blowing explosive ones. But a lot of people just, when they see Void Feast, they just start playing super incorrectly. They do everything wrong. But remember that when your opponent is not doing much and they are playing a reactive deck, nothing forces you to feast on standby. You can just hold it until you are in like end phase and then you feast on end phase because it's legit game. It's OTK, it's over 8,000 and uh, it's quite disgusting so doesn't really matter much what you send but you can actually use like send like a patchoulia in order to like destroy a spell or trap if you're scared of that and then the other card it does matter it has to be either a uh, deviati a tundel or an unku anything that is over the 27 of saitsimas because unfortunately it's only going to be 7900 damage if it's saitsimas I did the maths. It's Doolittle Chimera for 19, this, then Sejet for 29, and then uh, not enough with Saitsema. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we're gonna do. Of course, Doolittle Chimera. Kind of sometimes it just almost feels like a replacement for Bolt Sword. It's pretty, uh, pretty sick. But yeah, uh, so you just attack for game, and that's it. So, combo, <laughs> quote unquote, combo number one was very simple. Let's jump to the interesting part. Alright, so if I show you this hand, obviously you'll be like, hmm, this, this, this doesn't really feel like an Infernoid combo, right? But let me tell you something, this is as Infernoidy as it gets. <laughs> Infernoidy, that's my, new, uh, that's my new term. But anyways, so you're gonna go tanky to search one of my favorite cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Bujini Hiroko, so this card is super overpowered. Uh, you're going to see what it does extremely soon. So of course Sun Mu is gonna get uh, Zuchkong, which is gonna special itself. Then you're gonna make my favorite Ixies in the entire game by far, which is Bujin Bujinte Kagetsuchi. And there are actually two reasons why, well, three reasons why I love it so much. Basically, on the summon, it's mill 5. So that's already better, better than Minerva, but it has two other effects. Well, I mean, another effect where it can protect your Beast Warriors from being destroyed by Battle by Card Effect multiple times just by detaching one. And also, it doesn't, like, activate. So it's kind of like uh, the graveyard effect of, you know, like, Veilinx and Return of the Dragon Lords. It's just continuous. And also, having, like, Bujin in his name makes it a super broken card because you have Hiruko. And Hiruko actually allows you to transform a Bujin Xyz into another Bujin Xyz. And Hiruko is not once per turn. So people who ha who've uh, who actually been playing this deck, like, ever since 2017, they know what this can actually do. Uh, this actually never existed in the TCG, unfortunately, because by the time we got Hiruko, a uh, rat was semi-limited and Inferno Zodiac was just, like, unplayable. So, gonna be milling five cards. I mean, obviously, I'm just uh, skillful at Yu-Gi-Oh, so I mill five Infernoids. Then I transform my monster into a uh, Sasuke's favorite uh, Jutsu, which is the Susano. I don't, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe Tsukuyomi is his favorite jutsu, or like, Izana, no, actually that's, I Itachi likes Izanami, but anyways, Susano can actually <laughs> take a Bujin monster from your deck and either send it to the grave or add it to your hand, who cares about sending stuff to the, unless you're playing like actual Bujins, but if you're playing legit Bujins in 2020, you're, um, you're playing sign the match slip and let your opponent win turbo, but anyways, so, Susano is gonna search Hiroko again, and then you're gonna transform Susano into... Guess what? Kagutsuchi again, which is gonna mail five other cards. Like, what? <laughs> it's crazy. Just two cards allows you to mail ten. It's um, quite disgusting. And remember that uh, in 2017, for the OCG, not for the TCG, but in the OCG, they actually had Hiroko with three rats in one format. So one rat, just one rat single-handedly, nothing else, no requirements, was already mail ten. And you get like so many cards out of your deck. So if you mill like that fairy tale snow, you can actually like trigger that fairy tale snow more than twice. So uh, yeah, it's 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 quite disgusting. And um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it for combo number two. Now let's get to the even juicier part, I think. I don't know if... I I'm pretty sure I have a lot of combos, but anyways, let's get to it. Alright, so uh, if we have basically Needle Fiber now, so we're no longer playing with the Ancient Warrior cards, if we have Needle Fiber, we can do some uh, some sick stuff, you know? Some pretty sick stuff. So we're gonna go Decatron, send whatever, it doesn't matter. Then we're gonna summon our other monster, and then Needle Fiber is going to summon Olion, which, by the way, you can actually draw in this deck and do the exact same combo because of a weird way this deck is deck built, and also the way it works. So it's quite unique because most of the time when you draw O-Lion, you're actually quite mad because you have to summon it from your hand, otherwise you just don't have the combo. But in this situation, not only does it not hinder you, I want to say it even benefits you because it actually chain blocks the Needle Fiber and makes like O-Lion Chain Link 2. So the only thing they can Ash will be something much later on in the combo and at this point you just don't really, you don't really care too much. So we're going to make Link Cross, get ourselves two tokens, obviously. By the way, I, I keep seeing like people who complain about Needle Fiber and Link Cross being involved in every single combo, so... Like, Sam and I, we already said that, but basically, if you're trying to win Yu-Gi-Oh, you're trying to play the good cards, and also, don't have high standards when you don't allow good cards to exist. Like, don't say, oh yeah, a bad deck should be able to make 7 negates, but without any using any good cards, because your logic is incredibly, like, stupid on every front, so, yeah. It's just really dumb. Like, if you want to win, you play good cards. It's literally that simple. And it's not like it made Yu-Gi-Oh! boring or anything. Like, I don't think this is unhealthy. I think unfair tier 0 decks are unhealthy. And control decks also have the potential to be unhealthy. So, it's not because, like, good cards exist necessarily that the game just sucks. Like, in 2017, with Raging Tempest, the game was very, very healthy and very skillful. And, uh, like, in, in theory, like, a lot of decks were, like, tier 0 0.5. It w like, the best the best decks in the game were three 60-card decks. It was 60-card Paleozoic, 60-card Lightsworn Zombie, and 60-card Infernoid Zodiac. Those were the three best uh, decks. But yeah, anyways, so Garden Rose Maiden. I mean, this combo I already showcased it in my Chaos Lightsworn deck, but yeah, you're gonna use G Garden Rose Maiden with the Martial Marcher to make Chaos Rulic, Chaotic, Demonic Dragon, which, by the way, becomes a tuner since you used... Uh, Martial Marcher. Uh, someone reminded me in the comment section. I was like, oh shit, I completely forgot because I used to only summon one token with Link Cross, but I just, I don't know why I randomly forgot that this was no, uh, like, actually treated as a tuner, but it actually does change quite a lot. So now you can actually summon two tokens instead of just one, like a moron. Uh, we're actually gonna excavate five cards, and if we do get a light or dark, we can add it to our hand. It doesn't have to not be able to be nor uh, like normal or special. Well, I mean, yeah. It's not like Chaos Space, for uh, basically. You can just add any. So if you excavate like Valor, like I just did, or Gamma, well, you can take it to your hand. It's nuts. And then, you know, 8 plus 1 equals 9. So Ravenous Crocosaur, only draw 1, but it's not too bad. So we're going to draw 1. And then we're going to revive Chaos, Rula Chaos Ruler, Chaotic Demonic. And at this point, we have quite a few options. But unfortunately, since one is level 9 and the other one is level 8, we can't really make an Xyz, so we can make BLS, like the really strong BLS, or we can go for more draw power, which I think is just infinitely more logical. So we're gonna go for Mascarina. There was, there was actually two reasons why you make Mascarina. You have to make a Cybers monster at this point, and you have to make a Dark monster if you want to have a Dark monster uh, to banish for Chaos Ruler's like, special summoning effect from the grave, because as you can see, we do not have any other Dark monster access. We are going to have a Light monster in the form of Link Cross, but that's pretty much it. So Link Ross and uh, Mascarina in order to revive back the Chaos Ruler, but now we have two Cybers monsters, so we can summon a monster that does not exist yet in the TCG, but I think it's going to be released in Premium Gold, the, the, like the Gold series that have like the, the Stratos and Appaloosa reprint. So I think we're gonna get that card, and that card is Deco Talker Heat Soul. So one of the most broken effects in the Link 3 monster, and one of the only Link 3 monsters that actually generate advantage, there is that and Selene. But yeah, not a lot of actually good Link 3 monsters. Like, Link 2s actually have had, like, better effects than Link 3s, ironically. And there are much more Link 2s than Link 3s in the game. But yeah, Heat Soul, basically, uh, quick effect during either player's turn. You can pay 1,000 and draw one card. And there is another effect, but it's kind of irrelevant. It's, it's like, if you have 2,000 or less life points, you can, like, pretty much transform, like, this into a low, like, like link, th link 3 or lower Cyrus monster from your extra deck, which is cool. I mean, you can actually summon uh, Trisbania during your opponent's turn, and then, I don't know, like, 
do some cool stuff with Void Feast and trigger Trisbania during your opponent's end phase and banish a whole board, but you have to have like really almost no life points. So unless you Distrudel first to get you to 4k and then use the effect twice, this will not trigger, and also on top of that, this Trudeau is kind of banned if you understand what I'm trying to say, but if this Trudeau was a thing, then this effect would actually be quite relevant and Trisbenia would be actually, actually disgusting, but just being able to draw like multiple cards is insane, like just look at the amount of cards that we're getting to our hand, and also that Deviati technically shouldn't be there, I mean, with the like structure of the combo we already like inherently have two infernoids in the grave since we had decatron and a baby infernoid so as long as you mail like a either a deviati or an ununku with another infernoid you can summon like another big inf like like that big inferno from your grave which is like a negate so yeah and also now we can like revive back the chaos ruler at any point so it, we can do that if we want it, it just doesn't really get you anywhere but it's kind of free. And then we have three cards in our hand, so uh, Valor is a really good one. Ash, uh, I mean, Valor was basically excavated with Chaos Ruler, Chaotic Demonic Dragon. Ash was drawn off of Ravenous Crocozor, and then Gamma, I mean, whatever. It's, it was drawn off of uh, Deco Talker Heat Soul. But we're going to get one more draw during our opponent's turn, because like I already mentioned, this is a quick effect. So we are going to get our draw, and uh, that's basically going to be the end of this uh, combo. So... I'm going to jump into what should be the final combo, I think. So, uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so this is indeed the final combo. So I'm also going to basically just, con like, explain why O-Lion is just... It's good to draw. I I ironically, it is a good card to draw. So as long as you have O-Lion with any special summon, uh, you're good. You have, like, a huge combo. Once again, it's just insane how Needle Fiber just synergizes really naturally in this deck as well. So... You're gonna make Needle Fiber, and this is where O Lion shines. So, Chain Link 1, Needle Fiber, and Chain Link 2, O Lion. So, they cannot Ash this. Obviously, have the, if they have Valor or Infinite, whatever. You can't really do anything about this, but at least you are covered from one of the most popular hand traps. So, yeah. And if you are scared of like Nibiru, for example, well, don't be too scared because you can actually either have like Decatron, like on the field with like the effect of Deviati, or like Deviati itself, which is definitely doable because once you link off your Decatron and your baby Infernoid, you have two, in two Infernoids in your grave and blah, 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 you know uh, you know the drill. So we're gonna get your two tokens, blah, blah, blah. Like the, the very beginning is all exactly the exact same thing. Now it doesn't really matter whether you revive back Gamma or O-Line, really doesn't change anything as long as, I mean, as long as it's a level two tuner. So don't revive back a Decatron because the Decatron wouldn't have an effect because its effect is negated and it just doesn't achieve anything. So yeah. Chaos Ruler, Demonic Effect again. Now this is where the combo is actually different than the other combo. As you can see, I just mailed a Void Feast, which is insanely relevant because we're going to do something about it. So now we're drawing a Void Imagination. If we didn't draw the Void Imagination there, well, we could have had like another Imagination or like a Dead Feast in our hand and then like make another Heat Soul, draw another card, whatever. It's like, let's just say in our like total, in every card that we have, we still uh, don't have a way to trigger the Void Feast that we, uh, that we have in our hand in case it was a Void Feast or if it was a Void Imagination, well, obviously going first is completely dead, but we can do something about it. So we are going to revive back Chaos Ruler Demonic and once again do the exact same thing. So Masquerina Decode Heat Soul draw one. Yeah, at this point, like your hand has to feature a Void card if you want to get advantage of Void Feast. So we're going to summon back the Deviati once again, assuming that you have access to an Inferno Summon, which shouldn't be too hard because this is just like a two card combo. You draw like three cards and you mill like five. So it's just, it's almost free. Now, I forgot to mention that this Deviati actually has to be summoned in column number 2 or 4, and then you can actually summon the Griffin to the zone, like it, it actually has to point there, and you are going to be discarding one card and reset the Void Feast, <laughs> which is nice. It's very, very nice. So now we have Void Feast, but now there is actually a problem. Can you see it? The Griffin is actually annoying to us, so we actually have to find a way to out it, but we're not going to link these two away. That's just dumb. So we're just gonna pass turn, and then as soon as they use a monster effect, which realistically they have to use a monster effect if they want to attempt to play the game, otherwise if they play too passively, well, you win in another way. It's just, it becomes even easier. So they have to use a monster effect, and as soon as they do, you actually just negate it, tribute to the griffin, and then you can feast. Like, it's just that simple. So 
Our own Griffin is just not that problematic. It's really, it just doesn't change anything. And uh, yeah, at this point, it's happy land. I mean, you negated something, you have two more negates, you have a DD Crow, and you probably have like one extra card in your hand, a stacked graveyard, and you have more cards in your hand because, like I already said, this is a two card combo on average, and worst case scenario, it is a three card combo. So. Yeah, that is pretty much all I had to showcase for this combo video. If you have any comments or feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe because it motivates me a lot to keep making videos like these. And that's pretty much all I had to say. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.